viewers, you are welcome to Living Legends in Memory of the Divine Drama, Kofi Ganaba. <laughs> Ganaba is a musician. The unique thing about Ganaba is that he is the first, he's the first son of a bitch to play from drums with his hands and his feet in the in, 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 in Ghanaian music history. You know. So that uh, somebody says Somebody says about my place, he says he plays with more hands and feet than, more, than, than ordinary mortals are endowed with. <laughs> Dr. Kujo. He says, Guy Warren plays with more hands and feet than ordinary mortals are endowed with. Yeah. I'm the octopus. When I play drums, I become like an octopus. Uh, briefly, how would you like to describe Kofi Ganaba, who has been so close to you and uh, a childhood friend? But Kofi was my very good friend in our infancy. But as we grew up, I attended Accra Academy. He went to Achimata for training as uh, a teacher. But halfway he left and joined the late Ajo Kansi's uh, press, city press. He left and went to Liberia as a disc jockey. His father, the late illustrious Richard Akwe, had him re repatriated. But because he was adventurous, he went back to Liberia. And from there, he went to America. And uh, started um, his young um, interest in music. He was a drummer at school, a very good drummer. And he joined Tempos, the first Tempos. It's there that is liking for music blossomed. <clears throat> at Achimota, when he was there, he could entertain the whole school on Friday evenings. And uh, you would think, because of his antics, that um, he, was, he wasn't interested in education. But he, he was an intelligent chap, very, very intelligent and very smart. Billy Eckstein, uh, an Afro-American singer, trumpeter, trumpeter and musician, band leader. Uh, in my youth, we were look-alikes. And this article said that the next time used to entertain at uh, Howard University, I think it was. And he would sing and people would go gaga -ga over him and all that. And so he, he came to believe that his voice was his fortune, and that's what he should do, sing. So he, he left college, but didn't finish it, and went to the music field, and he became famous and great, one of the greatest Afro-American musicians uh, uh, of uh, my lifetime, or of, of, the, of the millennium. Now, when I was at Ashimoto, we, we would have uh, entertainment nights and I would tap dance and sing and play drums and carry on and turn the whole college upside down, you know, masters and 
students are like, well done, hey, who ha, hey, ha, guy, 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 hey, guy, hey, guy, hey, guy. So I also thought like Billy Eckstein, why waste my time in this goddamn school? I'm going to quit and go play my drums like Billy Eckstein quit to go and sing. And that's the truth. So I left, uh, I left college before I could finish with it. And I was bored stiff with the college regiment. You know, it was like uh, an army camp. And I, I can only take that for as long as I could take it. Then I, I got out. Ago Ghana! Afro TV presents Living Legend. Konimo, this is an order. It is not a request. Yeah. I can't speak so many languages. So my patients feel comfortable with me. Ghana Bar is a combination of many, 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 many. My children are the of their camp people. It was my first book. I went to London to help to turn our Gold Coast office. Then it was into a high commission. I got this sucker, not from Ghana, but from Philadelphia. People call me also some names as a result of my sporting life. I was a little adventurous. So on Monday when I saw the papers, I decided to quit football for good. Living Legends was brought to you by Afro TV. Ghana Bar is a combination of many, 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 many things. Talking about your dad, uh, Kofi Ganaba, memories back, how would you describe him? Well, when I grew up from school, my father was not here, he was in the States. And I went to a Jamestown Government Boys School. And when my father came back, I realized that I had a father who was a big time musician, so I, I, I didn't even realize it. So he got me into music and he taught me how to play the drums. And I was rehearsing with him. We played with police band and other um, groups, Uru dance band. You know, we were moving around. I was supporting him. And I was nicknamed the Little Thunder. So basically, me and my father, on the music level, we've been very good partners. I love him 100% for his music. He has done a lot of things for the world of music. Not only for Ghana, not only for Africa, for the world. I am more than a musician, and that makes me different. But musically, I love my father, and has inspired me to love music. And I believe that I can continue. And if the chance is given properly, I can do my best. Not maybe not to be like my father, but be almost like him, musically. So this is the way I remember my father. On musical level, political, Journalism, it was very good. You know, constructive criticisms of everything. Whether you are part of him or you are against him, he tells his mind and that's about it. You see? So I think it, we've lost a, a great guy for the whole world, not only Ghana. Go Ghana! Afro TV presents Living Legend. Konimo. This is an order, it is not a request. Yeah. I can't speak so many languages, so my patients feel comfortable with me. Ghana Bar is a combination of many, 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 many. My children are the ages of their camp people. It was my first book. I went to London to help to turn our Gold Coast office. Then it was into a high commission. I got this sucker, not from Ghana, but from Philadelphia. Yeah. People call me also some names as a result of my sporting life. I was a little adventurous. So on Monday when I saw the papers, I decided to quit football for good. Living Legends was brought to you by Afro TV. I remember when we were growing up, he always allowed us to do whatever we wanted to do when we were growing up as kids, me and my sister. Even when my mom didn't like it he'll go out he'll go like go ahead and do whatever you want to do just have fun um he, when i was growing up i 
worked for him as um, his personal secretary. And um, I used to travel with him. Those were very nice days. We used to travel together. And um, I used to organize shows for him. And um, apart from that, I I don't know, taking care of him, I have so many found, I have so many beautiful memories, you know, taking care of him, cooking for him, we talking, we used to talk a lot, you know, I always told him my problems and he would always tell me something to make me feel good, you know, it was very good, it was very, it was a blessing to have known a man like my dad and to have lived with him, you know, because he was, you know, he grew very, he, he was an old man and so he was um, very wise. It was very nice to have had a man of his status around me. He always helped me, not in terms of, you know, financial wise or anything but um, emotionally and morally and everything he was very supportive he's always been supportive I know he's still with me I just can't see him but I know he's still with me and maybe when I talk to him I know when I talk to him he hears you know and um, I will I will miss him a lot Ganaba is a unique personality in the field. Number one, <clears throat> I stopped using American jazz drums and, and started using African pentatonic drums because the African pentatonic drum sounds was what they took to America. The slaves took to America, but the sounds would frighten the white man, the white massa. And so he, he forced them to stop it and use his English bass drum and snare drum and all that, you know? <clears throat> and then to play music the way the white man wanted it to be played. The, the Africans would play music the African way and the white man would say, no, don't do it like that, do it like this. Do it the, the white man's way. And this was what was happening until I came out of Africa, you know, like uh, an Asadia Four into the jazz world to deliver people from this bondage and to, to establish and affirm and emphasize the, the African presence in, in jazz music. Nobody has done it before. No, no, nobody has ever done it before. I mean, you do the research and find out if I'm lying or telling the truth. And this, Ghanaians don't know. If Ghanaians knew this, they'd be very proud of it. That if, if, we were, if it was a world heavyweight champion, and America would, would say they have the world heavyweight champion, if, it's, if it talk, when you talk about drums, solo drumming, uh, Ghana by the man. Briefly, how would you like to describe Kofi Ghana by the divine drama? Well, he's a musician, he's a collector, he's an archivist, he's a broadcaster, he's a man of many, many parts. I work with him in various capacities. I help to organize his library. I organize a lot of concerts. I was his, an activist, you know, for him. Well, being his activist and his aid, what are some of the things you really remember about Kofi Ganaba? Go on stage with him. That's an experience I will never forget. I mean, going with, on stage with Ghana, but I can't describe it. It's an experience, you know. <laughs> I, I can't describe it, but... who? Bang! 
a firecracker will go off. Then we we'll climb on stage and do our thing. I was a mime actor and he'll be running a commentary on the things I'm doing on stage. Something else, something else. I mean, <laughs> I can't describe it. It's an experience. Now, being his aide, what will you really describe as things that really or uh, easily get him angry? Dumbness. If you are dumb, if you if you don't think smart, if you don't think fast, it irritates him. Or when in his quiet moments, before he goes on stage, you want to come and talk to him about irrelevant things. Very, very irritating for him. <laughs> For me, he's the greatest drama the world has seen. And I'm saying this because he plays different kinds of drums and different kinds of rhythms. He can play the jazz kit very, very competently. But then he plays African drums even better. And when you come to African drums and rhythms, he doesn't stick to Ghana. He plays from Ethiopia, Benin, Cameroon, Burundi, Urundi, various, various rhythms from various African countries competently. And in Ghana too, he plays Ghana rhythms, Ashanti rhythms, Northern rhythms very, very well. I mean, you can't find a drummer anywhere in the world who can handle so many rhythms so competently. He's the greatest drummer this world has seen. The most memorable performance would be the last performance of Ya Asantewa, Warrior Queen, at the National Theatre Accra, Ghana. That, that night was something else. It was something else because the play had started to accept and use many of the ideas which I had pumped into it, and the ideas which had been rejected and scorned at, and laughed at. They, they got around somehow to incorporate these ideas. And that night, the show jailed. I have never forgotten it. It's, it's, it's my best night in my music world. Can you briefly describe your dad working with him technically? Well, when he's playing with my father, my father is a type of musician that you cannot take chances with him. You have to be focused when you are playing with him. You should know what you are playing because he can stop you on stage and tell you that, get out of here, what the, what the hell are you playing? So you have to be alert and, and, and rehearse and be perfect because the man was a, just a right on time, a perfection person. So. There's no way you can just go and jam with him and try to do anything by heart, you know? So me working with him, I've had a lot of experiences with him, not from now, for 40 years, you've been working with for, for somebody all your life, especially your father. I mean, <laughs> you're bound to learn something. Yeah. So we can identify ourselves 
properly. If he hit a note, I know where it's coming from. If my father play quickly, I know me, my respond, call and respond, I know what to play. So we've been doing these things for years. And this is the uh, uh, the climax of that things that we've been doing in this show, on this bomb diggy recording. So I'm, I'm always cool with him. I like to play with him. I enjoy playing with him because he enjoys playing with me too because we understand each other. It's only few people that I can really play with them and enjoy myself. Okay. And my father, too, I believe it's only few people in Ghana here that I can really play because they haven't bothered to study his music. They have music in the archives that all musicians should go and look for it and try to develop on what he has put down. So many compositions that not only me I'm supposed to uh, continue, but anybody, senior can continue, anybody can continue, Ben, Jerry, Telfer, any, any group, all the groups can be able, but they don't bother to go and study. So we have to change that trend and give praises where praise is due and then help the people to develop the music so that we can have more Ghana bass. So now on the flip side, can you remember some of the arrangements you play and give us some a cappella of it, just in memory of your dad? In ke da da ke be ke be o da da amen be amen be in le nyami menyo amen bana song before and rollings da da ke be ke be that is my father's I kept her with me. <laughs> <laughs> On this note, folks, you are still watching Living Legends in memory of Kofi Ganaba, the divine drama, and his son, uh, Glenn Kofi Ga would I be out of COVID? Aha! This is Ghana Baba, <laughs> or for short, Ghana Baba number two. <laughs> well, on the program, and it's so exciting. At the same time, it's so we are so sad and we are so happy. I don't know. This tells you that Kofi Ghana Baba has really carved something that is so monumental that we can't just forget it. He's a true legend and he will continue to live with us. Keep watching the program, Living Legends.